Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another lovely Wednesday here on Get It Got It Good. I am your host, Naja Wolhai, as you all already know, but sitting next to me today is the lovely Craig T. Dobson, which I'm really excited. Hey, <laughs> so today we're going to delve all into how you got to this point as of today. Okay? okay. Some of the trials, tribulations, because if you guys don't know, this man has done a ton of things in the music industry, right? And a lot of people that I know of are trying to get to where you are. You know, as far as doing videos, as far as management is concerned, labels are concerned, the do's and the don'ts, <laughs> some of the life lessons. So before we delve into today's show, two things, you guys. First, I want to thank my sponsors, as always. I want to thank Dance Solutions, Dance Solutions Youth Outreach, Mission Dance Works, One Man Shoppers Another, Esther, favor one and start on one. Thank you guys for always supporting me. I love you, love you, love you. And the second thing, of course, is you guys want to see the talent that this man has. I was thinking about putting you on a spot <laughs> and making you sing. I decided to be nice, unless he wants to do that for us, you guys, later. However, as an introduction, I decided to pay, play part of your video. Okay. All right, okay. right? So, you guys... Watch part of this video and then you'll get an idea of who we're dealing with. We'll be right back. I'm not dating myself, you guys. <laughs> um, how did that particular song, since we just watched it, come about? So, <laughs> funny thing. Um, when we were completing the EP, I uh -huh. was in Atlanta, we were completing the EP, and um, we had done two songs mm -hmm. that um, the producers had written and produced. And they had asked, um, they were like, well, you write too, right? I was like, yeah, I write. And they were like, well, you have anything that um, we could listen to? And I had a scratch track that I had done of All Right. Mm -hmm. And they heard it and they were like, 
man, you know what? We need to add this to the we need to add this to the project because we were we were just gonna do you know we were gonna do five songs on the mm-hmm. EP, but the five songs were already pretty much done. Mm-hmm. And when they heard that, they were like, no, we need to add this because when we you know we were working on the feature project, and they were like, you know, it was gonna be both of us, you know, their mm-hmm. part and my part. But they were like, no, this this is gonna be a preview to what's coming. So so, so we, um little bit of educational moment here. EP, Scratch album, and who is us? <laughs> okay, so EP is, you know, extended play. It's just, um, it's like a half an hour. A mini album. A mini mm-hmm. album. Um, who the producers are. Mm-hmm. Um, B Hits and Keith Collins. Um, Keith Collins is the CEO of 919 Music. Mm-hmm. And um, B Hits is a major producer. I mean, he's produced stuff for everyone. Mm. Everyone, um, platinum selling uh, producer, and he is the um, CEO of Team Pen. Okay. Team Pen. So Team Pen and 919 Music, they are a label and a writing company, and they collab. So they're partners. Cool beans. Yeah. And the one more thing of the scratch. So a scratch track is, you know, if you have like a little keyboard or you know, you just put your ideas down. It's just something so basic. It's a notepad for writers. Yeah. <laughs> a notepad for writers. So yeah. basically, I did a basic track, you know, um, the, a beat and some chords, and I put the vocals on it. And it, it was, you know, clean enough for, for you to hear. It's not something I would put out, but the idea was, you know, when I give it to someone who really does production, and they made it really big. I mean, if you hear the scratch track, it's like, okay, that sounds yeah. cool. But after the production, all right is what came up. Okay, so, yeah. so let's go back, you guys, because this story is interesting. A lot of you guys want to know, okay, I'm from the DMV, you're from Annapolis, the DMV, mm-hmm. debatable. I hear people debate that. Uh, Annapolis is not part of the DMV. Yeah, it's in Maryland. How Annapolis is it not? Is it says Maryland. Annapolis, Maryland, DMV stands for D.C., Maryland, and in Virginia, Virginia. <laughs> but we won't go there. Capital so. city. Oh, Maryland. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Only like a true nap. <laughs> person. Okay. So, how do somebody who may be watching go from local homegrown artist to going out and getting like 11 Grammy considerations and albums? And how did that all come about? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so um, your typical soulful singer. Preacher's kid started singing in church. Okay. Um, and from like the time I was six years old, I started singing in church. And um, it's just something I always done. Um, once I got out of high school, um, I met Ron Wood Jr., mm-hmm. who um, who is a producer, a writer, and he's a musician, um, jazz artist. And we were we formed a group, mm-hmm. Smooth, um, simply Smooth. And um, that group was, um, we just were singing, doing talent shows. We had did like um, a talent show for the Apollo. And um, we had, I think we had, you had to go through rounds. And we went through a couple rounds mm-hmm. and, and we made it to the Apollo, but we had grabbed the attention of some labels. So instead of doing the, the oh, Apollo, mm-hmm. you know, we went to the labels and, um, we had some good feedback. We were writing, we were producing, and we were young guys. We didn't really know what we were doing, but we knew we could sing. We knew we had tight harmony. We was just four church boys trying to make some music. And um, and once we grabbed attention of the labels, that's it was like that just that hunger. And, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, um, we had about eight deals, mm-hmm. eight chances at deals. And it all fell through. So then finally, we, we decided to put it out ourselves. Mm-hmm. And putting out, uh, we did three projects with the group. And we put it out. And um, Like it's on some, Spotify and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah. You guys can find it. Yeah, if you look up um, Smooth. So we, we were Simply Smooth. And then there was a conflict with the name because there was another Simply Smooth in like Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So then we changed it to Smooth, which is SMUV, an acronym for Seductive Music Unique Vocals. Mm. And and um and we we got I mean we got a lot of acclaim we sold a lot of units overseas, um, online we um and and all that music you can probably find on YouTube right now. Mm. Um, I think some of that music is 
maybe iTunes. It's definitely mm -hmm. on YouTube for you to hear um, a couple music videos and and um, we had some some label heads that um, that were really interested in us, but for whatever reason it didn't work out. So after our last, I think our last opportunity, it was like. Island Records or Electra, and and we were ready to be signed again. Mm -hmm. And and once it fell through, I just was like, I'm done with music. Done. I, I was depressed, so um, I just fell back and just was out the game for a second. Out the game. I was in church. I was like, you know what? My joy never changed. Uh huh. Singing in church, directing the choir. So you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. But I was really depressed. My cousin one day tricked me into going and singing. He, um, Carl Anderson, the drummer, Carl Anderson, tricked me into <laughs> going job. to the show. And um, and basically, I was going to watch mm -hmm. because he was like, man, you're depressed. I want to get you out. Little did I know he was going to call me up. And he knew I wouldn't embarrass him. So I came up and sang a couple songs. Met this promoter, Robert Smoot, who is um, the promoter for Brent Core Entertainment. And that's how the label that I signed to, the independent label 992 Music that I signed to, saw me because we were doing a performance at the Howard Theater. And they saw a video of it and was like... Who was that? Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. you know what, man? And, and Keith Collins, who who lives in Atlanta, who's the, um, the label head, he he's from Annapolis, he's from Bywaters. And he was like, man, he was like, you know what? I never met you, but I know who you are because... You know, Annapolis is small, y'all. <laughs> I, I was, I was a you know a young guy trying to you know mm -hmm. make some beats, and I was like, you know what, one day I'm gonna do a song for him, and we did a whole project together. See? So, so um, there's a lot of nuggets in this so far. You know, there's how do you get eight possible contract deals that fall through, like the do's and the don'ts, and then what type of mindset that it takes because you know <laughs> it's that roller coaster and depression and then the mental toughness that you have to have and the faith in yourself that you have to have in order to go ahead and try it again so let's backtrack all right, all right. <laughs> how in the world first of all do somebody decide or a group of people decide apollo no Labels, yes. Like, what was the thought process behind that? So I guess we were thinking, we were looking at at down the line. So mm -hmm. the Apollo, yeah, it would have been immediate. It would have been, you know, okay, I'm on TV. Yeah. You know, we, you know, we sing and people are cheer, but the end game. The end game was get a deal, mm -hmm. um, make a name for yourself in in the music business. Um, like I said, I'm a writer, so. I'm thinking, you know what? If I get my name out there, somebody might come and get me to to, to write for them. You know, mm -hmm. somebody might want me to do some background vocals for them. Um, you know, I always knew that I might. I'm, I'm ready to date myself right now. I always knew mm -hmm. that once I got on, I was gonna have a duet with Biggie. Oh, Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. I knew it was going to happen. Then it didn't happen. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, okay. So then when I had next time around, I was I like, was a baby when I came out, y'all. I was like, <laughs> yeah, me too. I was a couple years old there. <laughs> <laughs> and then when when Rick Ross came out, I was like, I'm going to do a song with Rosé. And it didn't happen, but you know what? I'm all right, right? You're all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. So, so the end game was, you know, it was it was a business decision, mm -hmm. and it was a chance that we took. But you know, wait, wait, why not? Why so not? wait, okay. So you have to know your vision, right? Because yeah. if you do not know your vision, you can get detoured into like things that are immediate versus what you want long term. Yes. So that was good. So that's how you made that initial decision. How do you go and get eight possible deals and don't sign one? So. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <sighs> okay, we're ready. <laughs> so, getting a record deal, you know, like I said, after the first two, I mean, we had about eight opportunities, mm -hmm. and and for whatever reasons, it was, you know, it was personnel in the group, you know, it was some things that didn't work out with the group. Um, I know a couple times it was some deadlines that we didn't meet. Um, but um, it. it 
I don't have an answer for that. I just feel like the opportunities were in front of us, but for whatever reason, it didn't work out. So with that, I just feel mm-hmm. like it wasn't the season. I can see that now. I was about to say God's timing, y'all. You cannot fight it. I can see that now, but when you're in the moment, I mean, my faith, my faith has always been strong, but in the moment, you know, I was just like, man, I could have been, you know, doing mm-hmm. what I love to do. Like, Music is is what I love to do, and you know, to get paid for something that you love to you do. Would do for free. Yeah, that that was the beauty of it, and um, and I guess that when I had an opportunity to go to school on a scholarship, mm-hmm. and I didn't take that, and what kind of scholarship? I chased the music, so <sighs> I had <laughs> um, an academic scholarship. I love to it. go to yeah. a school in Ohio. Okay. And after the time had passed for me to accept or receive it, mm-hmm. I, I I denied it. And then they gave me another chance because it was like, okay, this is your free money sitting here. You know, Ohio State is not too far from Maryland. and But I was chasing music. Mm-hmm. So when everything fell apart, you know, it was kind of like, I guess that, that kind of brought on depression like, I didn't even have anything to fall back on mm-hmm. because I was focused on the music. You know, I was working maintenance at the mall, mm-hmm. um, you know, working at some fast food places, um, and it didn't pan out. And then, um, you know, there's this little girl who was about to, um, I found out that mm-hmm. was going to be coming into my life nine months later, so I really was... Daddy-o. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really was a tough time. But like I said, my faith was always strong. So, you know, I was just able to to accept. I, I'm, I'm one of those people who feel like I'm going to accept the hand that's given. Mm-hmm. So if God has something for me, I'm going to get it. And if it's not for me, I'm just going to keep on working, trying to and get it out. What's so here's the thing, you guys. A lot of times people are frozen in fear about what to do because there's so many different paths. You had scholarship opportunities, music opportunities, and you chose a path. And a lot of times people go, oh, well, it's over, right? And they get depressed and and they go, well, I blew my life because I did not do what everybody was telling me to do, the masses, which I'm sure was saying, you better go to school, boy, (laughs) right? But look at this. You better have something to fall back on. But look at how God works. If something is meant for you, it comes back full circle. So there is no right or wrong. There's just a what do you feel, what do you want to do, and go after it. If it's meant for you, it'll happen. Hence, the next step was... The next step was (laughs) when I met Robert Smoot, Mm -hmm. Renko Entertainment. So he has tribute shows. And I mean, when, when I met him, he was like, man, I do these tribute shows. Like, I want you to do my shows. So I'm just fresh off of losing record deals. So I'm like, mm-hmm. heard it all before. Okay, man. I was like, I didn't want to be rude. So I took his card. And, you know, so I took his card. And I was like, okay. But I was, you know, I was doing my thing in church. I was happy. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't getting disappointed at church. Yeah. I was worshiping. The you know. caution, which came from disappointment, which turns into fear of going out again. I was with my church family. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, you know, doing music that I loved. I was fine. And um, then um, Carl, was like, Carl was like, man, did you ever call Rob? And I was like, okay, let me call. Let me call. And um, that was in 2010. Mm-hmm. So um, I called him, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, um, I want you to do this Gerald Bird OJ show. And at the time, it was um, the group was still together. It was three of mm-hmm. us who, um, and we, you know, we went and did the show, and and that t- me doing that one show with him turned into, like I said, that was 2010. I do shows with him. Last year we did 19 Jeez. shows, and 18 of those shows were completely sold out. See, so it was one that was not sold out by a few by a few seats. So I'm saying like. And I'm not talking about like little holes in the wall. I'm mm-hmm. talking about like the Howard Theater, uh, Bethesda Blues and Jazz, the Carlisle Club, um, which is a, um, a dinner theater five minutes from the MGM, mm-hmm. which is where I'll be soon. Oh, yeah. um, we'll talk about that. But um, um, Ronald Rapids Theater, 
um, that Dolly Parton's brother built in um, North Carolina. Um, the Civic Center in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I mean, sold out shows. Mm -hmm. And from these shows, like I said, the label saw me doing, I think um, it was a Motown tribute. Mm -hmm. And I think they had a video of me doing Let's Get It On. And they were like... That's my song, y'all. <laughs> and, and B Hits, who, like I said, I mean, he's worked with, like, he worked in Whitney's camp. He worked mm -hmm. in, and I don't mean to be name dropping, but I mean, he's a mm -hmm. major producer, a platinum producer. And he was like, man, your voice is incredible. And we want to work with you. I mean, you know, Keith saw the vision. He talked to his partner, and his partner was like, man, look, if, if you're riding with him, I'm riding with him. And, and that's how the project. You guys, one breakthrough. A lot of times, because it's not happening, it's not happening. It only takes one breakthrough, it. and it just goes from there, and your momentum will start to build. That's with anything, y'all. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so... Then what happened? Okay, it was three of y'all. Mm -hmm. Now it is you. So now it's um, solo. So so Ron Wood Jr., mm -hmm. who um, who is a jazz musician, Ron is doing his thing. He's still producing, um, but he's re released three albums, and he's working on one now. Mm -hmm. But Ron is also the MD for the band that, you know, when I go out to sing, the band that backs me. Mm -hmm. And um and when Ron goes out to sing, I'm the vocalist for his band. Okay. So Ron and I are still together. Works now yeah. when um when 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 Smooth is called, like sometimes um people will call and ask, Man, you know, what about a smooth reunion? Mm -hmm. Um, if they were to call, the three of us are still, you know, still tight, we're still in the same circle. So if somebody did want to see that show, we would bring it together for them. Um, we were working on something, um, there was a birthday party last year that um, that we were supposed to do, and um, for whatever reasons, it, it just it fell didn't through. work out. Mm -hmm. It fell through, um, but we still have plans to, to do some stuff. Do some stuff. Um, so if, if somebody called for us, we'd definitely be there. We're all in sister churches. Ron and I are, Ron's the um, minister of music at our church, and I'm the worship leader. And Gerard, who's the third person, Gerard Coates, he is at one of our sister churches, so we're all still connected. In the same family, yeah, basically. All still connected, so. So then how does that look? Because a lot of people go, well, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of people go, okay, this sounds fine. You mentioned a lot of shows. You're a father, mm -hmm. and you work. Mm -hmm. So, you guys, a hustle is a hustle. You got to do what you got to do. It. But that scheduling, like, how do you manage um, so, um, my iPad, my iPhone, and I have two paper calendars. I have a desktop and I have, um, a, a, a Good old fashioned thing, yeah. A, a portfolio, <laughs> um, calendar. Um, everything that comes up, I write it down because if I don't, somebody be ready to sue me. <laughs> somebody be ready to chase me down. So basically, I put, a, you have to schedule everything. Mm -hmm. um, my work schedule, um, you have to schedule everything. And then we need to also talk about my workout schedule because that is crazy. Tell us about it. Because, so, you know, um, I keep saying I'm going to work out. That's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, in 2014, I was at work and I had to walk upstairs to get to up on three flights of stairs. There's no elevator. So it was really, it's like two flights, but coming from outside into the building, that was a flight as well. So it was like three flights of step to get to our floor uh -huh. to where my room was. Okay. Um, and I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, I got to the top of the steps. I got dizzy. I was about to pass out. I had chest pains. So they sent me home, went to the hospital, was admitted. Um, didn't have a heart attack, had a stress attack. Um, found out that um, I had heart damage. Blood pressure, I had sleep apnea, um, and I was pre diabetic. Mm. All of that was because I was 405 pounds. Now, just pause, right? If, if you look at this one right next to me, would you ever think <laughs> that it was three of you? basically yeah. sitting right next to me, yeah. right? Yeah, my, um, yeah, if 
I turned this way, my stomach would probably, yeah, almost be touching you. That's amazing, you guys. So uh, there's a lot of people who are trying to lose weight, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but I, I, I know most of the time it's just because I'm lazy. But for some people, it's a real struggle, mm -hmm. right? So how did you go from four plus to basically normal, standard, whatever? So three nutritionists and two trainers showed me how to eat showed me how to use equipment. Why three and two? So the first one, um, I had to pay for. Okay. And, you know, because it was important, like, okay, my doctor basically hurt my feelings and said, listen, um, if you don't do something within the next three years, your family's going to put you in the ground. So I was like, I thought he was insensitive. I thought I was going to the ethics committee. Like, and the way he said it was like, you're too fat now. If you mm -hmm. don't make a change, your family's going to put you on the ground. Sometimes you need that hard lesson, right? That is what mm -hmm. I needed. That is what I needed. Because after I got home, and I was like, you know what? I'm not taking care of myself. And had he not said that, that wouldn't have jump-started me. Like I said, I had a nutrition that I had to pay for. It got really expensive. So I had some friends who were nutritionists that, that were, like, that were basically like, you're not going away from here, so mm. we got you. And then I had three friends who were also trainers and um, who just like showed me how to use the equipment, um, gave me a workout plan, and, um, and I was working out for the, first, for the first two years. I was working out six days a week. It, my schedule was like right after work. As the shows and stuff were coming more, rehearsals mm -hmm. and everything, I had to change it up. So my workout schedule now, let's say Monday, mm -hmm. after choir rehearsal, 8 o'clock. So I work out, let's say, 8 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, I might be able to get there about 6.30. Wednesday, I might be able to get there about 4.30. So you got to be flexible, you guys. Thursday. I have two rehearsals. I might get there by 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, Friday, depending on what I have going on, um, I might go at 9. I might go at 10. That's extreme, but I just try to make sure I go. So now it's like four to five days a week, mm -hmm. but, but that's six days a week, you know, strictly, you know, the eating. Eating is 80% of it. Yes. Um, the nutrition is 80%. And it's a lifestyle change. And, and people can tell you all day long what you need to eat and what you need to do. But it's up to you yeah. to actually go and do yeah. it. I know um, the nutritionist was like, you need to give up carbs and sugar. <laughs> I and know. I was like, I was like <laughs> that's I'm my like, thing. I'm a black Italian. You know, my lasagna, my pizza, my noodles. That's too That's I life. Was. That's life. I was black Pavarotti. That's, <laughs> that's who I was. And, um... But, um, so I gave him up one at a time. Okay. I gave, up, I gave up the bread. Then, you know, like a month later, I gave up the potatoes. A month later, I gave up the rice. So it was like, and right before I gave it up, you know, I made you sure. To, you had to binge. I had to, you know. So. To do, you know, to eat it, just to get it out of my system. But, but after, I'll say about three or four weeks, like my body stopped craving. Mm -hmm. And and the sugar, I had given up sugar for like, I want to say like over a year, um, maybe a year and a half. And I just saw my body like shrinking. And and, and it becomes addictive when you it see does. it work. And yeah. when I start seeing, the, you know, a couple little, a couple little cuts. And when I saw, um, you got kids watching. You, when I saw. <laughs> when you can see it again. <laughs> I saw um, my body changing. <laughs> I had to figure out how to put it. I saw myself going from one extreme to another. You know, I started getting really addicted. <laughs> okay, okay. So, fellas, <laughs> it will help your sex life. At one point, it looked like, I mean, 
my sweater probably looked like yours. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> At one point, my sweater probably looked like yours. Mm-hmm. So. It is what yeah, it is. Yeah. So, so, I don't look like that anymore. Yes. I don't look. Okay. Don't have the D's. Yeah. Don't yeah, have the D's. Double, yeah, the double, double D's. The double D's anymore. Okay. So, let me ask you, because we're running out of time, as always, we don't ever have enough time. You go from local homegrown to now MGM. Tell us about that really quick. So, um, I, I, all, I can, <laughs> all I can say is I just, I, I never stopped. I never stopped. You, you just, you know, when you hear people, you know, Steve Harvey says it all the time. Keep pushing your dream. If it was easy, everybody would be doing Indeed. it. Indeed. You just never stop. And like I said, when I was depressed and I went through that period where I'm not going to do it anymore, and I got my joy back singing in mm-hmm. church, and, you know, when I was put in front of people, that's what I love to do. Something came alive. You felt it's, it. Yeah. I felt it. And it was like, you know what? Even if I'm just doing these shows mm-hmm. for the rest of my life, I'm doing something, a gift that I have, that I do for free, I'm getting paid for it. So, like, that's my livelihood. Mm-hmm. So, doing the shows, and I mean, like I said, I'm doing, you know, four shows a month. Mm-hmm. That's really good. That's, I mean, it, it becomes fun. pretty lucrative, yeah. and it's something I do for free. Yeah. So, it's like, that's free money. Find what you love to do that you would do for free, get paid for it. Life is gravy. Bam, that's it. <laughs> and then, with the label, you know, I had these in- industry, you know, um, veterans mm-hmm. who who are still in the business, who are still relative. I mean, they're mm-hmm. still making music for artists. Um, if you turn on Love and Hip Hop and, and all those shows, they have music on all those all shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, just to have to have them, you know, wanting to be a part of what I was doing and, and telling me I have an incredible voice where I was once depressed and, and self-conscious, you know, really self-conscious with the weight, weight and everything and else on stage and then now you're getting all of this positive energy and positive feedback so it's helping you grow even more absolutely so and then a, go ahead I'm sorry and one thing that they said to me that, that i mm-hmm. think was the biggest that was the biggest thing when they saw me on stage um i think i may maybe had lost a little weight mm-hmm. i was maybe 380 at the time mm-hmm. and they were like i was like you know how y'all gonna market me mm-hmm. they were like i was like because you know heavy guy you know they were like listen we don't care a thing about what you look like it's your voice and at that point i was like okay i'm working with these folks see okay so really quick before i ask what's your next show what's coming up how can they find you i hate to say this don't throw me under the bus don't shoot me comment below on ig facebook whatever you want to do i love to hear it but here's the reality ladies it doesn't work that way for us. <laughs> Hate me if you want, but I kid you not. Let me get up to 400 pounds and a record label is going to tell me, I can't sing, first of all. So let's let's not go there. But a record label will tell me real quick, uh, honey, you need to, right? So I think there's a double standard in the entertainment industry as far as women and men are concerned. That's a debate for another day. I just want to put that out there. Don't shoot me. However, we'll go back to the topic. What's your next show? How can somebody local or whoever else, because we're all over the place, find you and your upcoming show? And then how can they follow you? Okay. So um, next show, I'm doing this um, Gerald Levert, um, Bobby Womack, and more tribute. Um, and of course, I'm doing my original tune. So if y'all want to hear all right, if you want to hear it live, now um, I've been told every time I perform it, like live is better than the video, better than the record. So, mm-hmm. you know, if y'all want to come and check it out, Carlisle Club, it's um, Alexandria. It's five minutes from the MGM. Once you go over the bridge, it's the first exit. It's okay. a, a beautiful dinner theater. Um, but all it's online. You can you can search it. The food is great. Um, drinks and all that, if, if that's what you do. Um, I like drinks. <laughs> so, um, social media. Mm-hmm. Um, on Facebook, Craig T. Dobson. On IG, Craig T. Dobson. On Twitter, Troy Vocals. T is for Troy. Yeah. Middle name, so Troy Vocals. Um, now we know. <laughs> um, um, I Heart 
Craig T. Dobson, Spotify, Craig T. Dobson, mm-hmm. title, Craig T. Dobson. So it makes life easier, you guys, to find him. Craig T. Dobson across the board, except for Twitter, he had to be special yeah. in Detroit. Yeah, because yeah, I think that was my first one. I didn't know what okay. I was doing. So that was the first one. <laughs> um, and um, the, you can find the music on iTunes. Um, Spotify. Uh, app, uh, I said iTunes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Google Play, mm-hmm. um, Amazon. Any um, and every. Anywhere, anywhere that you can um, download music digitally, it's available. Um, working on some new music, new solo music. Um, working on some music with Ron Boy Jr. Um, Dukes and Dobson. Okay. Um, the duo. Mm-hmm. We're um, we just had a show at the City Winery. We'll be back there over the summer, and we're working on a project as well. So. And you guys, he's gonna be performing in August, so stay tuned for that right here locally in the DMV yes. area. So I want to just say thank you for that right now. <laughs> Um, so I just really want to thank you for taking the time out to visit me today on G3. Absolutely. Because it's fun. There's so much stuff, you guys, that I found that I could, like, just dissect and give you some more knowledge. But, you know, we always run out of time, so I have to leave you with what I always leave you with, and that's being original, because an original is always worth more than a copy. Have a great day, you guys.